So if you're new to this channel, I have been building a financial forecasting process in Microsoft Power BI. I think this video is now the fourth or the fifth one, but what we're doing is we're building a Power BI dashboard that can read and write to a Microsoft Fabric database. And that reading and writing is enabled by translatical task flows. In the previous video, we started building out that translatical task flow or that user data function. My goal was to get all the way through building that user data function, but we didn't quite make it because writing the SQL logic ended up taking longer than I thought. And typically I like to keep these videos around 10 to 14 minutes. So today we're gonna to be taking that SQL logic that we wrote and we're gonna be actually putting it into the Microsoft Fabric data function. Hi, my name's Ned. This little guy back here is my dog, Jai. And today we're gonna to be taking a SQL script, putting it in a user data function, and then testing that user data function to make sure that it can read and write back to our Microsoft Fabric data warehouse. All right, that was a lot. I hope you followed, but let's jump into the computer. Let's get started. So for those of you who don't remember, we were in our SQL warehouse and we had written a script. And one of the things that I actually hated at first, but now don't mind about Microsoft Fabric is that it saves your queries over here. The one thing you do have to be careful of is that you're not ending up with a ton of different queries. But if you remember, we wrote this and this essentially is some SQL code that will first go through and it will, uh, if the account fiscal period and department combination exists, and the value that's different uh, and the value that is entered is different, it'll update that to not the current record. And then the other thing it'll do is it will go through and it will insert into that table. Now this is some SQL code that we can put into a stored procedure. So I am actually gonna go right over here to DBO, new SQL query, well, actually, I'm going to expand DBO. Then I'm going to go to stored procedures. Then I'm going to go new SQL query right here. And here we have a proc, right? So we we have our proc where it takes our parameters and then it defines. So I can grab pretty much all of this right here, right? And I can simply put these here. And I'll go through and I'll put in some commas, do, 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 comma, comma, comma. And then I will remove my R equals that we were using to kind of test this, All right? So we'll delete these out. And then we will take our statements that we are using right here and we'll copy and paste those into the body of the stored procedure. So right here. So I am now gonna just go ahead and I'm going to title this DBO update record proc and I'm going to hit run and it's going to throw a bunch of errors and that's because I had my declares so let's just quickly get rid of these do 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 and right here and we'll add an int in front of this there we go and now we'll run this and there we go. We should now have a stored procedure. So now that we have our stored procedure, we can try calling it with what's called an execute statement. So in an execute statement, you go EXEC, and then you put the table name, and then you set values for all the variables. And this is how we will call the stored procedure via our Python code in the UDF. Just for example, here is that exec statement created. And when I run this, what you'll see is it'll call the stored procedure and then it'll do the exact same thing that would have happened if we had been running uh, this SQL, all of this SQL logic. So if we go back, as you can see, it updated the one record and inserted the new one. All right, so now we're ready to go in and start designing our UDF. Now, just as a reminder, UDFs or user, user data functions are a preview feature, so you have to enable these on your Microsoft Fabric tenant. I've done this on mine, so I can just create them. And the way we do that creation is pretty straightforward. We go over here into our workspace, and then we click New Item, and then we search for User Data Function, and we Enable. Now, it's going to want a name here, so we're going to call this 
write uh, edit and delete because we're going to create two different pieces of functionality, right? We're going to create the functionality that allows us to create a record and edit it. And then we're going to also create the function functionality that allows us to delete a record. We're then going to simply click this new function button right here. And it's going to load in a starter function. So if you're new to Python, which is what user data functions are written in, don't worry. Python is honestly pretty easy, and especially with ChatGPT and Gemini and Copilot, it's pretty easy to stumble your way through things. However, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect our user data function to our Microsoft Fabric data warehouse. Now, if you don't know how to do that, well, you are in luck because Microsoft has put together a bunch of examples. So you can go over here to this edit button, then click over here, insert button, then click warehouse, then click query data from the warehouse, and it'll insert in an example. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually delete all of this original stuff that they had done here. And I'm going to bring this over. Now, actually, before we do that, I do just want to draw your attention. If you notice this logging.info, we'll grab that query or this statement out of here because we'll use it throughout our function. And then we'll delete everything out. So let's go do, 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 do. And here we go. So we now have all of our queries. I am not going to use any kind of date time. So I'm going to delete this out of our example. And then finally, it's time for us to link our database. So I'm going to click manage connections, add data connection, and then select our like construction. Oof, I named that date. That should be construction data. But <laughs> select our construction data warehouse. Now we're going to have an alias over here. So I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to put this in right here. So we now have a self-authenticated Python connection to our data warehouse. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to delete pretty much everything right here. And then I'm going to grab this logging statement. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to have it return. Right, It says right here it's returning a list. I'm going to change this to return a string right here, and then I'm going to have it return a string that says I ran. Now, this logging info, we're going to get rid of this, and we're going to say I connected to the SQL warehouse. I'm going to misspell that. Um, but then I'm going to hit this publish button. Publishing UDFs in Microsoft Fabric takes honestly a pretty long time. So I'm talking to you right now while that UDF is publishing. What I'm going to expect that UDF to do is I'm going to expect it to connect to the warehouse log saying, hey, I connected to the warehouse and then return and I run, which means that when we're going back into this after it's finished, we can click right over here, click this play button and then click run and it'll load and we should we have a log screen and if we wait at just a hot second and just like that i've given up waiting now if you remember from earlier videos in this series we don't actually have a way to generate a primary key for the budget id when we designed the stored procedure we actually had budget id be an input into this and my plan was to put that logic the logic that would calculate the new budget id into the python code of the udf However, while I was waiting for all that logging, I was reflecting and I was like, you know, what's a much more elegant solution is just putting all of this logic in the SQL procedure. So just like that, we're now back into the data warehouse and we're going to alter this proc a little bit. So we're going to remove this budget ID right here. Then under this begin, we are going to declare a new variable. So we're going to declare uh, budget ID right here, budget ID as an int. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set the budget ID to essentially the earlier or earliest budget ID. So we're going to go, uh, select and go at budget ID equals, and we'll go min budget ID 
from, and we'll put in our table, which if we go over here, do, 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 I believe is this table right here. So we'll go insert into canvas. There we go. And the reason why I do, why I do that insert is just because this is cap sensitive. And so it's just, it's a lot easier, honestly, to do it this way. And then we'll go ahead and we'll copy over or up this code right here and we'll remove the alias. So what this is gonna do is this is going to get the earliest budget ID if it exists and set it equal to the budget ID. The next thing that we're then gonna do is we are then going to say if, and we'll go at budget ID is null, right? Then, so we'll go begin and right in here, we will select budget at budget ID equal to is null max budget ID. And if it's null, we'll want it to return to zero. Then we will go ahead and we will add one because we want to increment by one and we'll go from and we will grab this table one more time. So what is this actually doing that we are working through here? Well, let's talk through it. So first of all, it's saying, hey, if the accountant period and department combo exist, then set budget ID equal to the earliest. And then if this returns null, meaning that this combo doesn't exist, then it'll run this piece where it'll take the max. And if it's null again, then it will know it needs to set it equal to zero and then add one. So this should generate in our unique ID which then means when this runs and inserts in the new record, it should create a new budget ID. So let's run this to alter the proc and hopefully we don't get any errors. And nice, it, we didn't, which means that if we now go back into our SQL right here and we get rid of this and we run it, it should run perfectly fine. So let's let this run, one, two, three. And then let's go 10 point, we'll change this right here. And let's run this. And now let's go select star from, and we'll go in back and we'll grab this table. Now this edit was unplanned because I was really wanting to show it to you in Python. But the reason why I went back is because we want the best cleanest solution not necessarily the one that we planned for. And sometimes this kind of engineering, you know, hey, there's a better way to do this, just kind of happens. So we can now take just this single stored procedure and then essentially call it from our UDF. So switching back in here, right? Here's the logging info. We can then go down here and we can go cursor, dot execute and we can give it our query then our data and we will go through and we will set our query equal to this code right here and we'll go through and set this all as question marks do, do, do. then we'll go three quotes so python knows that this is a block Right, and then we'll go new line right here and we'll format this in, right? And we'll go do, 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 format this in right here and then tab this in right here. So here is our query, there it is executing. For our data then, we will want to create a, like a thuple right here. So we'll need to set our values that we're gonna be pulling in. So we're gonna be getting account ID, that's a string. And then we're gonna be getting fiscal period ID as a string. And then we're going to be getting department ID as a string. And then we're gonna be getting value as a float which then means that we can then set all of these values and we'll just do them in that exact same order. Now, Python, very similar to the SQL that we were just reading, the T-SQL, 
is cap sensitive. So just, you know, this is where copy and paste is your friend. I've spent way too many hours debugging code that just, it's like, cause I had a typo somewhere. I'm a little dyslexic and I just leave these typos all over, but here we are, right? So this function should now run. So once again, we're going to hit that publish button. Now through the power of editing right here, we can, we have our published function and we can run it again. Only this time now it wants inputs because we defined these inputs over here. So we can enter in our one, our one, our one, and then our value, which will be right 10.2 and we can run it and it'll go through and it should execute against the data warehouse there. So there's our logging, right? It logged that it connected to the data warehouse and hopefully we don't get an error. And look, we didn't. So now if we flow back into this and we change this to select a star from construction fact data, right? We should now see that one record and I am not seeing it. Why is that? And I'm just gonna jump in here because I spent the about 10, 20 minutes troubleshooting this. And honestly, I forgot probably one of the most basic SQL things, and that was a commit. So the way that you can do that in a UDF is you can essentially just take your connection and then go dot commit and it'll run. So now when I go through and I enter these values and click run, I'll get my output that it ran. And then every single time that I query this table, which if we give this a second, it's really taking a hot second. But now when we go back and we query this table, what you'll see is you will find our new record has loaded in. So with all that said, if you made it to this part of the video, I just want to say thank you. Like this is now almost a 20 minute video, which has to make it one of the longer videos on this channel but I'm choosing to leave in all of my coding instead of just giving you a quick polished answer because I think it kind of adds to the story and the drama a little bit. But it does mean that you have to deal with some, a lot of ums and hmm uh, and that kind of stuff from as I think through these solutions. That said, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, please give it a like, and thanks for watching. Bye.